Welcome to this introductory tutorial on structured text in RS Logix and Studio 5000. And as you develop your skill set in PLC programming, you'll realize that there are many ways to accomplish the same task and solve the same problem. However, certain approaches would be much more applicable in certain cases and less so than others. Through a lot of logic, you can create programs that are easy to maintain, understand, and augment over time. That being said, most PLCs, including Alan Bradley ones, the ones that we're looking at today are have different ways of implementing the same logic and those ways would be structured text function block diagrams and sequential function charts that being said structured text is a very good introduction or transition from ladder logic in the sense that it's fairly easy to pick up but it also resembles some of the other languages that you may be familiar with such as c c java or python and there's going to be a lot of different instructions that are going to be similar, yet they're going to feel a little bit different. So today we're going to be creating a simple program, but we're also going to look at the interface that's going to be different in in uh, structured text. Before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. So let's jump into it right away. The first thing that I'm going to look at is the routine that's called st underscore routines. And under here, I'll have the st underscore practice routine. So what I can do is I can right click the st underscore practice. I can select add and then new routine. And you'll notice that the process is exactly the same as we did in ladder logic. And here I'm going to name this underscore zero five underscore practice. So this is going to be our new practice routine. And instead of being in type ladder logic, you'll notice that here you have a drop down that you can select and then set it to structured text, which it was already set for me because I've implemented a few things earlier today. So that's going to be structured text. We're going to click OK. You'll notice that this program has been tree created in our tree. That being said, we still need to go back into our main and we need to reference that routine in order to be able to execute the code that's going to be there. So I'm just going to copy this run copy run and I'm going to paste that below. I'm going to change this jump to subroutine to underscore zero five and press enter in order to auto complete the text. So you'll notice that we're jumping to that underscore zero five underscore practice. I'm going to just compile the entire program, press OK. And let's navigate to the practice routine. So the first thing that you'll notice is as you navigate between the ladder logic and the practice, the layout of your bar above the space that we're going to program in is going to vary slightly. That being said, the variation is not uh, that significant. And we'll see a couple of examples of that as we start implementing certain tags. However, it is still important to notice that we still have this green bar, which means that the routine is being executed. But you'll notice that despite having the cursor in the top left corner, we're unable to type anything. So I'm trying to type anything on my keyboard. I'm pressing different keys and nothing is showing up. And the reason, of course, is that we're not in edit mode. So just like in ladder logic, you could edit rungs. Here you can edit the entire routine. And this is going to be done by pressing this start pending routine edits button right here. So I'm going to press that button. You'll notice that now the view has been grayed out and there has been a second bar placed next to it. And I can essentially navigate between the two bars. If I go into my original view, you'll notice that the bar has been once again set to green versus the other bar is set to gray. And this essentially tells us in which window we're looking at. And for now, it's not very different since we have a program that was blank and we're creating a program in which we haven't uh, written anything yet. So they're both blank essentially. But there is a distinct difference. You're looking back at the previous view and you're looking at the current view that you're editing. Similar to ladder logic, like you have two rungs. Let's just give an example. If you have a rung that's implemented here and you double click the rung to edit, you have a rung that was previously being uh, executed and now you have a new rung that you can make edits to and of course if you edit this then you can still see the pre previous rung the way it was versus the current one going back to this practice session we can start typing in a few things the first thing that we can look at are of course comments so similar to how we would create descriptions for our 
program in the rungs you can start creating comments so just like in many other languages this is going to be a double slash comment this will not be executed so comments are very simple these are this is a single line comment so you can type in whatever you'd like and you can continue doing so as many many times as you want the other way of commenting is a text block so it's a parenthesis with a star so if you want to create a text block that's going to be a comment you can do so like that and let's look at let's look back at the original view so as you remember the program was blank here we have all the comments and let's see if we can compile everything as we would expect. So here I can accept pending routine edits, just like we had in Ladder Logic. And I can start seeing that this has been now transferred into the test window. So as you can see, we have test edit view. And we have the original view. And from here, we can once again accept pending edits. And we can test accepted program edits and we can assemble everything back into the program and you'll notice we're back to the same single view that we had so this is the program that's running but it's essentially doing nothing because all we have are comments now the next thing that we want to look at are going to be assignment structures so in a structured text you're not essentially setting tags you're assigning them to a certain value so let's look at that for a boolean tag so i'm going to start pending edits and i'm going to say uh let's say tag bool and I'm going to assign this to a zero so obviously a boolean can be assigned to either a zero or a one you'll notice that there's going to be an underline under the tag that's going to be red and a green for the rest of the line so I need to create this tag so I'm just going to right click this create new tag just like we saw in the ladder logic examples you can create a boolean click create and you'll notice that at this point we can compile the program so I can compile like so and let's see if everything works out well so you'll notice that the tag has been assigned to zero now the most common question that you're going to get when you transition into structured text is how can you see the value of the tags so remember that if you go into controller tags and this is of course a scope uh, program scope tag so you have to go into program scope tags you'll notice that this tag has been created over here and if we go into monitor tags you'll notice that the tag is in fact zero as we assigned now this becomes very inconvenient so what they've actually done is you can use this watch window if you click on watch you'll see all of the tags that are being used in the current routine and as you continue adding tags they'll be added here uh, down below and you'll see essentially the value of the tags and you can troubleshoot this way by seeing the exact values that are changing in certain different tags and of course right now this is a very simple example so we don't have that going on now you'll notice also that it can become somewhat frustrating when you start typing in this and you'll need to remember that you do need to be in edit mode in order to make any changes to your routine just like you did have in in uh, ladder logic <clears throat> now we can set this boolean to a one and this would be no surprise that this would be just fine so let's see here that compiles just fine let's see what will happen if we try and set it to let's say a5 so a5 obviously those of you who know what a boolean is should not be allowed to be written into a boolean since out since it's outside of the range and you'll notice that we do have a an error that is being thrown so a boolean tag is expected therefore you cannot write anything that's going to get the tag out of bounds but you can however write a tag that's going to be for example tag boolean 2 that would be also of type boolean so i'm going to create a tag this is going to be a boolean click create and this would be an acceptable uh an acceptable assignment so essentially one tag is being assigned to another and remember that in ladder logic this would essentially take a few rungs or a few uh sub rungs to create next we're going to move into our dints synths, and just integers in general so integers are quite simple so you can say tag int is equal to 485 for example you can say tag int is equal to 56 7 uh, actually I think that's going to be over the value let's see here tag 
int equals to tag int two. Let's see if we create these tags, new tag int, int create, and we're going to create this one at the same time. Let's see here, integer, perfect. Let's see if everything compiles as we would expect. So there is an error. And of course, we are getting an unexpected symbol. So this symbol is unexpected as you see in the end, but what it's actually telling us is that we're missing the, the colon that's gonna be in this assignment tag. So very, very important to pay attention to how you implement these tags, missing the semicolon or the colon will throw an error. Let's recompile that once again. And of course it gets a little bit, uh, you will need a little bit of practice to get used to this if you're coming from a different programming language. That being said, it's not not too difficult. Next, what can we do with these tags? Let's see if we can assign a the int to a double int. So you do remember that when you perform a move instruction in ladder logic, you are allowed to essentially truncate your tags through what's called um, by assigning a double int to an int or vice versa, it's just going to truncate your data. So we can do that as well. So this is something that you'll notice is going to be a little bit uh, similar, but at the same time, you need to pay very close attention when you have truncation going on because it's not going to be as obvious in through your move instructions that you've seen in ladder logic. And once again, just a simple reminder, if you click this watch button down here, you'll notice the values of the different tags. But since we're setting the tag int to the final value of the int2, you'll notice that it's going to be all zero. And can we set the tags directly here? And the answer is yes. So let's, for example, change this to, let's say, a 56. Let's say this to 54. And you'll notice it's immediately reset because of the logic in the program. And of course, we cannot write any values different than ones into our Boolean. And since we're resetting them, it's going to go back into zeros and ones. And you'll notice that the logic is taking place as as expected. So as soon as we change this here, because of the assignment that we have written, this 34 is automatically updated in the tag int structure. So that's that's the assignments for the integers. Next, let's look at the strings. So I'm going to edit this program once again, and I'm going to create. So strings are a little bit different to implement, and they are handled on a character to character basis. So I'm going to create this tag string, and I'm going to assign the first letter. So essentially data zero. I'm going to assign that to 65. And the reason why it's 65 is because in ASCII, 65 is actually the letter A. So let's see if that compiles. I actually forgot the colon here before the equal sign. Let's click on assign. What else are we missing? We didn't create the tag, that's right, new tag. And this is going to be a string, string, create. Let's compile it once again. And you'll notice everything is great. If we go back into watch, you'll notice that this is displayed by a letter A. And we can, of course, we can change that. We can change that using a hexadecimal value or just the, let's see here. I guess we can't change it directly from here, but we can change it based on the value of the ASCII characters. And we can also, of course, we can add more characters and through some of the other instructions that we're going to see in a later video, we'll see how to compose essentially a full string through a function that's called concatenate. And we're going to add that into our string. So strings are slightly different to manipulate, but it is possible in structured text. Next, we're going to look at the a different assignment. So notice that here, if we look at these two Boolean assignments, we're assigning a zero and then we're assigning a one. Now, this is going to relate to our ladder logic examples in the same way that you would have an OTU and an OTL. In other ways, in other words, here you are unlatching this Boolean and here you are latching this Boolean. Now, this creates a certain problem in the sense that we cannot implement an OTE. And this has been created through what's called a non-retentive tag assignment. So tag bool can be set. 
So this is going to be a different operand, but this is going to be a square brackets with the same operand that we had before. And this is going to be set to one. And this line of code, this tag bool set to one is essentially acting as an OTE. And this can be done with the other uh, the other pieces of data as well, but we'll see more examples as we move forward with these tutorials. And ultimately, this allows us to create an OTE structure versus this allows us to create an OTL and OTU structures. And that's that's pretty much it for the tutorial today. I just want you to start becoming comfortable with assigning different tags, with man manipulating data through assigning uh, tags of different types, and just making sure that you're comfortable within the development environment when it comes to structured text. Like I've said before, it's a little bit different but and get does take time getting used to. But once you're used to troubleshooting through this window and essentially working with this text editor, it becomes quite powerful in some of the applications that we're going to see in later videos. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.